All right, so just to recap, right? Um, in Java, we've learned one-dimensional arrays. Anytime you want to declare it with one-dimensional array, you want to define the type followed by the square brackets. Now you can do the square brackets that follows the data type, or you can do it right after the variable name. Doesn't really matter. Typically, you don't put it in front of the variable name or anything like that. Um, and let's try to see what happens if we actually do that. And test. Um, you know, although it's valid, it won't be a compile issue. Uh, no one's going to be able to do to read that, or you don't want to write it that way for readability. Okay, so um, just to recap though, this right here is the declaration. Declaration. A declaration just says, okay, I have my 1D reference, but there's actually no one dimensional array, right? So this is just a variable that's pointing, that's gonna be pointing to a 1D array. It's gonna refer to one, but there's not one yet. It's not until you assign it to an already existing one or call the new operator to create one. So here we're creating four ints and then here two doubles and then three strings here. For simple data types, simple data types would be all the numerical ones in addition to booleans, right? Numerical values are given um, an initial state whenever you have a two or 1D or 2D um, declaration and instantiation. So here, all of the uh, all of the integers in here are going to be zero. Same thing for doubles. So any numerical type, typically in Java, they will be initialized to a value of zero. For Boolean types, they will be initialized to a value of false. Now for object types, right, strings or anything else that you see in the future, we have all written classes together. Any classes and strings, etc they will default to default to null. So what you have are spaces that can hold objects. However, right, the objects are not there yet. Therefore, they're nulls. For int, they default to zero. And then for doubles, they will default to zero. Um, and then finally, for booleans, let's just add it just so we're complete new boolean 5 now these ones will default to false if I can spell um, alright so that's what we have with one dimensional array with one dimensional array we only care about one number that number tells us how many spots there are in, there, in that array so now if we extend on that and let's focus on two dimensional arrays two dimensional arrays right you are thinking that you have two dimensions, therefore you have the number of columns and you have the number of rows. So rows, calls. Um, so for AP Computer Science, what we're going to do is we want to make sure we focus on a two-dimensional array that's actually just a stack of one-dimensional arrays. Um, so it would be something like this. 0, 1, 2, 3, and then there's another stack, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then another stack, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, whatever. So this is going to be row 0, that's row 1, and then this is row 2. Um, and then of course this is going to be column 0, 1, 2, 3 indexing will still start at zero so in order to declare a two-dimensional array declaration is the same way as we have done for anything um, so we need the type and then instead of one square bracket you have two my 2d so this right here does not point does not point to an actual 2d array this is a reference it's going to, but it's not there yet. So same thing, it will look kind of like the 1D declarations and instantiations here, right? My2D2 is equal to new int 
three, two. Okay, so now here's what we have. We now have a two-dimensional array that can hold six integers. So the question is how many rows and how many columns will that 2D array have? Well, you always want to think of it in terms of RC, row column. Um, row followed by column. And if you have to, think RC cola or race car. But you want to think of that first number as representing the number of rows. And the second one is going to represent the number of columns. So same thing with two-dimensional arrays. These values will be initialized to zero. So what we should have would be three rows, right? One, three, and then two columns. So that's going to be zero, zero. Oh, you know, let me just copy paste. So this is what this uh, array will look like. So three by two. Three rows, two columns. If you wanted to do the same thing for doubles, you could, um, for booleans, but syntactically, right, instead of one square brackets, you now have two. Now, how do we actually print out the length of the 2D array, and what does it mean to have a length? Um, if you just do the name of the array followed by length, you'll actually get the number of rows. So, if you take the name of that 2D array and just do a dot length, it will give you the number of rows. Returns numbers, number of rows. Now, if you wanted to get the number of columns, of course, we're assuming you have a rectangular matrix. Um, then you would do my 2D, and what you can actually do is access one of the rows. So here we're accessing row zero, and then call the length property. That will give you the number of columns. Um, okay, so now, um, so 